All right, we are back to Flappy Bird and we're ready to start developing this very cute game. So let's take a look at our project and let's see what we have available to us. So as you notice, we have quite a few sprites here for this project. So first we have Flappy, our main character. We have scores. So we have the sprite with digits for all the scores that we're gonna compute. And this sprite in particular has costumes from zero to nine, okay? Then we have the start button over here. We have the ground sprite very interestingly right over here. And uh, with this ground sprite, we will create the impression of movement very, very shortly. Then we have pipes, which will be the obstacles for Flappy. And as well, the pipe has a number of costumes to simulate different kinds of obstacles that Flappy has to avoid. And then we have the title. As you notice, many of these sprites are pretty ginormous, but fear not, as we will deal with every single one of them in turn as we develop this very nice game, okay? Now, the first thing that I wanna start with is the start button and the title. First of all, I'd like to make them a little bit smaller so that when I click the flag, I would like them to be smaller right about 50%. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to click the start sprite and I'm going to start programming it. So I'm going to go to events and then bring in when flag clicked. So when flag clicked, I would like the start button to be a little smaller. So I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to set size to 50%. So when I click the flag, notice the start button is manageably small. And I'm going to do the same for the title sprite as well. So I'm going to click the title sprite, go to events, when flag clicked. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Then I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to set size to 50%. Okay, so now the title and the start button are much more manageable. So this is already pretty good. Now, when I click the start button, I would like to broadcast a message to tell all the other sprites to prepare for the start of the game. And the title and the start button will fade out of the screen. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click the start sprite and I'm going to go to events and bring in when the sprite clicked. And I'm going to make the start button broadcast a message and then make it fade out. Now, if you remember, the fading out means basically changing its transparency over time, over a number of repetitions. So I'm going to broadcast a message and I'm going to create a new message. I'm going to call this start game. If you remember from the previous chapter, broadcasting a message means sending a signal to all the other sprites to do something and we will program each sprite to do a certain thing when they receive this message. But for now, I'm just broadcasting this message. And then I'm going to program the start sprite to fade out. So over a number of repetitions, and I'm going to go to control section right below, and I'm going to bring in repeat 10. And over 10 repetitions, I'm going to change the transparency effect of the start button by 10. So I'm going to go to looks, and I'm going to bring this purple lock change ghost effect, this is the transparency effect, by 10. So 10 times 10 means 100. A transparency effect of 100 means that the start button will be completely invisible. And after that, I want to hide the start button completely. So notice that when I click this sprite, it fades out which is exactly what I want. But if I click the flag again, which means starting the game, the start button doesn't show up anymore. So we need to fix that by bringing this purple block clear graphic effects and then bringing in the show block. So order your blocks like this, clear graphic effects, show and set size to 50%. Clear graphic effects just cancels out the transparency effect and show means bringing it on screen. So if I hit the flag again, the start button will appear on screen again. All right, now the next thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to program the title sprite to react to this start game message that the start button broadcasts when I click it.
So I'm going to go to the title sprite and I'm going to bring the events section when I receive and I'm going to react to the start game message and I'm going to make the title fade out as well. So I'm going to do a very similar thing. I'm going to do repeat 10 and I'm going to change the ghost effect of the title by 10. So I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to bring in the change ghost effect and I'm going to fill in 10. And then I'm going to hide the sprite completely. So when I click the start button, it will broadcast a message. The title sprite will receive that message and it will execute this script that I've just written here. Okay, so let's try it. So if I hit the start button now, bang, both sprites fade out. Once because the start button has its own script to fade out and the title because it reacts to the message that the start sprite broadcasts. Now when I click the flag again, only the start button will show up because the title sprite doesn't have any programming to appear on the screen again. It just has the set size to 50%. So we need to fix that as well. We need to bring in the clear graphic effects and we need to bring in the show block. So when the flag clicked, the transparency effect is canceled and the sprite is able to display on the stage. So if I hit the flag again, you see that both the title and the start button appear on the screen. If I hit the start button, both of them fade away. If I hit the flag, both of them appear on screen. This is exactly what I want. So this already looks great. Now I'm going to move to the ground sprite where I'm going to show you a few tricks to generate the illusion of constant movement. So bear with me here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is that when the flag is clicked, this ground sprite will move to the center of the stage, right over something like here. So here's what I'm going to go. I'm going to drag when flag clicked and I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to pull in this go to X and Y and X will be zero and Y will be something like negative 140 because I want the sprite to be towards the downside of the screen. So when I hit the flag, the ground sprite is somewhere along these lines. This looks good. Now, in order to generate the illusion that the world is moving towards the right side of the stage, we need to make the ground sprite move towards the left side of the stage. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to control and I'm going to bring this repeat until block and until the X position of the sprite is almost at the edge, at the left edge of the screen, then I'm going to change its X position. That is, I'm going to translate it leftwise. So changing its X position by a small negative number. You remember coordinates and changing X by a negative number. Changing X by a negative number means moving towards the left. All right. So I'm going to bring in from the operator section this less than operator and in the first space I'm going to fit in the X position of the sprite so from motion I'm going to pull in this rounded X position block and I'm going to make it less than almost the left edge of the screen and I'm going to fit in the number negative 236 which is almost negative 240 which is the very edge of the stage so until X position is less than almost at the edge of the stage, I'm going to change this sprite's X position by a small negative number. So I'm going to change X by, and I'm going to say negative three. Now, if I hit the flag, notice what's happening. The ground sprite moves towards the left as I programmed it. This looks great. But notice that as an effect of that, we have this ugly space on the right hand side of the stage. So we need to fill that up. And I'm going to do that by creating a clone. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to control and I'm going to create a clone of myself before the movement. So right after going to the center of the screen, I'm going to create a clone and then I'm going to start gliding to the left. So now when I hit the flag, notice what's happening. The original sprite glides to the left and the right hand side space is filled with the clone, which doesn't glide at the moment. But what if it did? 
So I'm going to make this clone start all the way in the right hand side of the screen and I'm going to make both the original sprite and the clone glide at the same time. So here's how I'm going to program that. I'm going to program the clone by saying when I start as a clone I'm going to start right at the right edge of the screen. So I'm going to start at, I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to pull in this go to block. The X is going to be at the very edge of the screen. So X is the maximum 240 and the same Y coordinate negative 140. All right. So if I pull out this gliding script, if I hit the flag, the two sprites are at the center of the screen and at the right edge of the screen respectively. So this is the original sprite and this is the clone. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the clone also glide towards the left side of the screen. So I'm going to attach this block back to the original sprite and I'm going to right click and duplicate it and I'm going to snap this to the when I start as a clone block. So notice that the clone already starts gliding, but let me stop the game and let me start it again. So I'm going to hit the flag and notice that the original sprite and the clone starts gliding all the way to the left until this empty space is created again. So what do we need to do to fill that up? Well, another clone. So when we created the first clone, the original sprite was here at x equals zero. So at the center of the stage. So if we want this clone that we created here to create another clone, we need to do that halfway through its journey. So at x equals zero. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change this condition to repeat until x position is less than zero instead of negative 236. So we will allow the clone to glide to the center of the stage. And at this point, it will create another clone. So I'm going to go to control and I'm going to create yet another clone. Now, let me pull this away for a second to explain better what the effect of this is going to be. So when I hit the flag, the original sprite will start in the center of the stage, but I'm pulling this a little bit up just for you to see what's happening. Now, the sprite will start at the center of the stage and it will create a clone of itself. The clone will start in the right and it will glide to the center. And at the same time, the original sprite will glide to the left. So let me try pulling out a demo. So I'm going to click this block and notice that all these sprites will glide to the left. Now, when the clone reaches the center, it will create yet another clone. So I'm going to pull this a little bit up and this will create yet another clone, which starts in the right and glides to the center. And when it reaches the center, this will create yet another clone, which starts in the right and glides to the center and so on and so forth forever. Now, I want these clones to do what the original sprite did. After creating the clone, I want the clone to glide all the way to the left and preferably disappear. So I'm going to right click this repeat block and I'm going to snap it after creating a clone of myself. Now, if I hit the flag again, notice what's happening. The original sprite glides to the left and then all sorts of clones will get created and this right hand side will move indefinitely because we're creating so many clones that are going to the left side of the screen. Now, all we need to do is to hide this left hand side when either the original sprite or the clones reach their final destination at the left side of the stage. So for the original sprite, I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to bring in hide. So I'm going to hide the original sprite because you can't delete the original sprite from the screen. But for clones, I'm going to delete the clones altogether. So I'm going to go to control and I'm going to delete this clone. So when the clone reaches the left side of the stage, I'm going to delete it from the stage, which leaves room for the other clones to do their movement from the right to the left side of the stage. Notice the effect of that when I click the flag. So we have continuous motion. That's because as soon as a clone gets to the center of the stage, it generates another clone on the right hand side of the stage and they both glide to the left, 
which fills the entire stage on the horizontal. So let me pull all these clones to show you what's happening. So notice that once one of the sprite gets to the center of the stage, it creates yet another clone. But because all these clones are at the same vertical position, they overlap, which generates this illusion of continuous movement. So this is a trick that I would like you to remember as you're developing your own games and applications. Real life game developers use this trick all the time. Now there's a tiny little thing that I would like us to fix because if I hit the flag again, notice that the ground sprite is not showing up. So this is a problem. I would like to go to looks and I would like to bring in this show block and pull it right below when flag clicked so that the ground sprite is visible right after I hit the flag. So notice that the ground sprite is now visible. All right. So at this point, the ground sprite is completely programmed because we will keep it moving throughout the entire game. All right, so I'm happy with what we did in this video. We programmed the start button and the title along with the ground and we learned a lot. All right, this is pretty nice. Join me in the next video as we continue programming Flappy Bird.